Hello students. Today we will be studying introduction to vertebrae. Vertebral column is made up of a number of irregular bones called vertebrae. There are 33 vertebrae and these are named according to the region to which they belong. We can classify them as cervical vertebrae which are 7 in number, thoracic are 12, lumbar vertebrae are 5, sacral vertebrae are 5 which fuse to form a single sacrum, coccygeal vertebrae are 4 which fuse to form a single coccyx. Vertebrae are mobile or fixed. Mobile vertebrae are called true vertebrae, example being the cervical, thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. Fixed vertebrae are called false vertebrae and examples are the sacral and the coccygeal vertebrae. Let us see the curvatures of the vertebral column. Primary curvatures. During intrauterine life, the entire vertebral column is concave ventrally and convex dorsally and this is the primary curvature. In adults, primary curvatures are retained only in the thoracic and sacral regions. They are mainly due to the shape of the vertebrae. Now, the picture here shows us the primary curvature which is seen during the fetal life which is concave anteriorly and convex posteriorly while the other picture here shows us the secondary curvatures which are seen after birth. What are these secondary curvatures? They are convex forwards and concave backwards. They develop after birth they develop due to the posture. They are mainly due to the shape of the intervertebral disc and they are seen in the cervical and the lumbar regions. Say the same picture again. We see here in adults the primary curvature being maintained only in the thoracic and the sacral region. While in the cervical and in the lumbar region we see the secondary curvatures which are convex anteriorly and concave posteriorly. The secondary curvatures as I said are seen in the sacral and the lumbar region. The secondary curvatures are seen in the cervical and the lumbar region. Cervical curvature appears around 6 to 9 months when the child starts holding his or her head on its own. The lumbar curvature appears at about 12 to 18 months when the child starts walking. The same is seen here. This is the anterior part and this is posterior. So we see here the cervical region where the curvature is convex forwards and we see here the lumbar region where again the curvature is convex forwards. So, cervical and lumbar are the secondary curvatures while the thoracic and the sacral part are the primary curvatures which are concave forwards. We see here that at birth the baby has only the primary curvature. As the baby starts holding the head, the cervical secondary curvature develops and when the baby starts standing and walking, that's when the sacral, the lumbar curvature develops. We then see movements of the vertebral column. Flexion which is forward bending. Extension, backward bending. Lateral flexion that is bending on the sides. And rotation which is twisting of the trunk. Circumduction which is combination of all the above movements. What we see here is flexion or forward bending. This is extension or backward bending. Lateral flexion or side bending and rotation or twisting of the trunk. Let us now see features of a typical vertebra. A typical vertebra is made up of two parts, the body and the vertebral arch. Body is a ventral part of the vertebra, cylindrical in shape. It has got four surfaces, anterior, posterior, superior and inferior. Anterior surface is convex from side to side 
and concave from above downwards. Posterior surface is slightly concave from side to side but flat from above downwards and it has a number of foramina for exit of the basi vertebral veins. This posterior surface forms the anterior boundary of the vertebral foramen. The superior and the inferior surfaces of the body are rough for the intervertebral discs. What we see here is a superior view of a vertebra and this here is the body of the vertebra. The other parts are also seen here. The spinous process, a pair of transverse processes, a pair of laminae which fuse posteriorly to continue as the spinous process, a pair of pedicles, the vertebral foramen and we also see here the coastal facets on the sides of the body. This is a lateral view showing us the body, the coastal facet, the superior and the inferior articular process, the transverse process, the laminae and the spinous process. The vertebral arch consists of a pair of pedicles, a pair of laminae and seven processes, one spinous process, four articular processes and two transverse processes. The pedicles are a pair of short thick processes which pass backwards from the body. Between the adjacent pedicles we can see the intervertebral foramina. This here shows us the two pedicles which run backwards from the body of the vertebra. The laminae are a pair of bony plates extending backwards and medially from the pedicles and posteriorly the two laminae fuse to form the spinous process in the midline. The picture here shows us the two laminae running backwards and medially from the pedicle and they join posteriorly to form the spinous process. The body, pedicles and the laminae together enclose the foramen of the vertebra called the vertebral foramen. The same is seen here, the body, the two pedicles and the laminae enclosing the vertebral foramen. The transverse process projects laterally on each side from the junction of the pedicle and the lamina. And that is what is seen here. This is the transverse process. Articular processes, these are two on each side and four in total. They are the superior and inferior articular processes which project upwards and downwards respectively from the junction of the pedicle and the lamina. The lateral view here shows us the superior and the inferior articular processes which project upwards and downwards from the junction of the pedicle and the lamina. Spinous process of the spine. It projects backwards in the midline from the meeting point of the two laminae. This here is the spinous process in the superior view and the spinous process in the lateral view projecting downwards and backwards from the joining point or meeting point of the two laminae. Now that we have seen the different parts of a particular vertebra, let us see how do we differentiate between the cervical, thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae. Now cervical vertebra has a characteristic feature and that is the presence of a foramen in each transverse process which is called as the foramen transversalium. What we see here is a superior view of a cervical vertebra showing the body, the transverse process, the pedicle the laminae and the spinous process. What we see here is a foramen which is present in the transverse process and that is the foramen transversarium, characteristic feature which helps us in identifying the cervical vertebra. As far as the thoracic vertebra are concerned, this vertebrae shows presence of coastal facets on the body for articulation with the head of the rib. This is a lateral view of a typical thoracic vertebra and what we see here are the two coastal facets which are seen for articulation with the 
head of the vertebrae. This is a lateral view of the thoracic vertebra which shows us the presence of the coastal facets which are seen on the sides of the body and these are meant for articulation with the head of the rib. This is a characteristic feature seen in the thoracic vertebra. Whereas when we see a lumbar vertebrae, the lumbar vertebra are larger in size. They lack both foramen transversarium as well as the coastal facets. So here we see a picture of the lumbar vertebrae which is much more larger as compared to the cervical and the thoracic vertebra. They neither show presence of the foramen transversarium nor do they have coastal facets on the sides of the body. So this is how we differentiate between cervical, thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. Thus we have seen the parts of a vertebra and we also saw how to differentiate between the cervical, thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. We also saw the vertebral column and the primary and the secondary curvatures of the vertebral column along with movements of the vertebral column in this PPT. Thank you.